शिव योग नम शिवाय हिज होलीनेस ऑफ तिर बाबा शिवानंद जी ही ग्रेस्ट आस इन आसम एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑन थर्टी एथ नवेम्बर माइ सेल्फ डॉक्टर आर एन बर्मन एलंग उथ मी डॉक्टर एच शिव आयन बोथ ऑफ आस आर प्रोफेसर्स आसम एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी फर्स्ट अफ अल ए वेरी गुड वाम गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड on my own behalf and on behalf of the assam agriculture university i am very much pleased to be here a part of this international conference i would like to i would also like to convey my congratulations to the organizer department of sanskrit school of languages gujarat university for organizing such a global seminar myself and dr h c bayan from the department of agronomy assam agriculture university we were into this line of shiv yog healing of agriculture since september 16th our journey started when the members from bishwanath rally forum of shiv yog came to us on that very day we were preparing some of the lands for students practical they came to us and they have suggested that as we have organized one farmers sibir in your college so we are interested to carry on a comparison of trials but as we were the scientists to take permission from university authority we need to include any project in the department del technical committee meeting and already the technical committee meeting was over during the month of july so we got the information during september so that's why due to positive of time myself and dr bayan took the initiative that we should first get ourselves confident how shiv yog agriculture model it is work we must be confident ourselves first that's why we took this initiative it was a humble beginning and at this right time i would like to therefore sincerely mention the efforts of all the forum members of shiv yog because they have brought us to this experimental findings that's why it was an initial effort we have made but on this glorious occasion i would like to present what was our observations so we have tried to assess the performance of crop production through shiv yog healing of course it was a preliminary observation but i think its findings will be beneficial we have selected green gram bigna radiata which is an important pulse crop in the state of assam and it plays a very very important role as kharif pulses it is mostly grown in the kharif region and is harvested in the beginning of the rabi season so we all know that green gram it is widely grown in assam and in different other parts of the country in our place it is consumed as dal form and very frequently we use it as prasad in almost all the pujas and rituals it is its own significance for us whenever we combine this with put and mug we call it the combination of gram and green gram then it is a pure prasad in assam that's why we consider that as this is a crop which has significance to all of us not only as a simple pulse crop but also from this spirituality point of view from our attachment we have selected this crop so let's test it to further it is also a short duration crop which we can harvest within 70 to 80 days that was our idea of selecting this crop to so have selected this green gram and which is grown widely in all parts of northeastern region as i have already mentioned it has special significance for us we have seen that it has a superior nutritional value in terms of energy carbohydrates sugar dietary fiber fats proteins the thiamine riboflavin niacin and all other vitamins and minerals so these are the results we have obtained from other publications our intention is to study more on this line how we are performing next 
we have considered this as our objectives to study and compare the growth parameters and assess the performance of sheep jog hill green gram crop with the green gram crop grown under recommended practices. This is based on our own personal interest and to get ourselves acquainted with the sheep jog modality of agricultural production. We have some limitations. As I have already mentioned that there are some limitations on our part because this is an initial trial and we have considered only two treatments. So whenever we have to recommend anything to the farmer as a scientist, we need to carry out some more trials in different locations because some location, it has some special uh, significance. We have in Assam six agroclimatic zones and all these six agroclimatic zones have different characteristics of soil, of water, of climate condition. So if we test it in different locations, then and then only we will be able to recommend these practices to the farmers. That's why we have considered this is an initial trial with only two treatments. And besides that, as I have already mentioned, that we had very less time to study. So time and resource constraints were there, as this was our initial effort. We have taken two treatments. Treatment number one, as I've told you, this is sheep joke healing without any application of fertilizer, manure, organic, or inorganic pesticides. Sheep joke healing has been carried out by the sadaks of Vishwanath Swarili Sheep Joke Farm. Secondly, we have selected another treatment, treatment two, with all the recommended practices of production. Fertilizer doses were given as per recommended practices, as basal applications we have applied there, and even pesticides and chemicals as required to control the insect and pest attack were applied there. So here, these two treatments will try to compare and present the results before you. The crop was sown on 16th of September 2015 in lines of 30 centimeter by 10 centimeter space in both the two plots. Fertilizer doses were recommended. As per recommended, we have used it in the second plot. First plot was totally free. Manual weeding was done in both the plots at 20 days after sowing. It was as per recommendation, as per arrival of the weeds. So as I have already mentioned that seed healing was given by the members of Chief Joke Forum. So on this occasion, I would like to mention that Dr. Shrojit Das, then Dr. Kutum, he is also here, then Mr. Bishwajit Das and Mr. Apupa Das, they took the initiative to provide this healing in their own forum. So they provided seven days of seed healing, of course, four days in institutions and three days in my own. So seven days of healing was given, though, I have come to know that uh, seed healing should be at least for 10 to 12 days should be there. But due to paucity of time, they could have given only for seven days of seed healing. Anyway, still we have tried that one. We have tested the germination percentage of both these two, normal and with sheep joke healed. So we have seen some short of uh, glorious results coming out, positive results. The growth and the vigor seed germination could be seen here itself in the petriplets. You can recognize sheep joke yield with normal. In the normal, without any healing, we have seen that there are 96 percentage of germination percentage, which is also not bad as far as our concern. But in sheep joke yield, we have found that germination percentage was 100%. This is a very, very important observation on our part. When I've seen it in the laboratory, Dr. Bayon, he immediately called me that please come and see the performance. There's some sort of positive things are there and they see yoke healed. We have analyzed the root and shoot development of the germinated seeds. You'll be astonished to see that root and shoot development also, there are significant changes in the T1 that see yoke healed with that of the normal. Normal germination is about almost half in, in terms of root and shoot development. You can see that one. We have measured that one. <laughs> These are some of the initial observation which you made in terms of germination and vigor test which you conducted. So we have measured this one for sheep joke and for the next one. 
we'll have measured, we have measured for the normal also. And we'll show you the results in tabular form. So this we have tested after 60 hours. Generally, do not keep it for 60 hours, but whenever our interest developed, we keep this in the Petri place for 60 hours. Let's see what type of percentage of germination came. So accordingly, we have seen, you can see here and compare the performance. You just see the sheep joke yield, how it is, and normal, how it is. One can definitely see, one can visualize. So whenever we have compared the observation of germination and seedling vigor under laboratory condition at four days after germination, these were the results. Germination percentage, 100% for sheep joke, and for recommended practices, 96%. Root and shoot length, you can see 6.42. In case of T1 and in case of T2, 3.50. We can see that the root length is also 6.97, 3.7. There's a difference of 3.27 in T1 as compared to T2. So there is this root and shoot length ratio we have calculated at 1.08 and 1.06. Further, one critical observation which we made was regarding the color of shoots. Four days after sowing, we have observed that sheep joke yield seeds. The germination which we have observed is light to dark pinkies in color, whereas it is light green color in case of rap recommended practice. So there are some sort of changes. This change will be the cell level, which we have not tested due to paucity of time. There are some sort of changes at the cell level, some sort of changes at the molecular level that we can recognize, that you can see. Next, please, please. So we have taken the soil samples from the plots, and the soil samples are tested uh, before we show the seeds in the plot. But due, as the crop is still in the field, we could not take the soil sample after harvest. Otherwise, we could have compared the performance. What is there before and after ex ante and ex post evaluation we could have done. But that is not possible due to lack of time. And we'll be doing that one in the next pages. So we have tested the soil test results. And uh, the soil test results is, of course, OK. It is uh, available nitrogen is at medium form, phosphorus at uh, low and available uh, potash in that medium form. The soil is sandy loam form with a slightly acidic index of 5.5 pH. They're preparing the plots. We have engaged our two workers to prepare the large plots for both these two. And soil healing starts. Healing of soil in the early morning hours was given by the Sikh Joe Forum members as we are not acquainted to that type of healing. So they know this very well. So we allowed them, please come and do the healing. It was on in their own effort they are continuing. Since we have prepared the plot, since we have allowed the seeds to them, they are in continuous touch with the field. They are in continuous touch with the seed. Sowing of seeds was done on 16th of September 2015. This is what something we have seen, that uh, some sort of cosmic rays you could notice there in the sheep joke hill plot. There is the first observation which I could make that uh, something positive is there. And this picture is taken there too in the mobile. Perhaps in the high definition camera, we could have seen it in a very distinct or clear way. But one can recognize that some sort of a Cosmic rays are going into our ship joke plot. One can see it and one can feel it. So in future, I hope if we could have some high definition camera or with some other such type of mechanism, we could capture it in a more distinct way. Ship joke healing continues. He is one of our professors, Dr. Nogan Borloi, who took the initiative. And Dr. Babaji also knows him. He was in that's which you joke since a number of years ago. He has also provided the healing to sheep joke plot. This is the seedling starts coming up. At the initial stages, as we have used all the recommended doses to the plot two as compared to plot one, 
Not much difference we could notice in the initial stages. But later on, we could notice some sort of differences coming out. This is the initial stage. The chilling starts coming up into two plots. This is the morning sunshine. We took the photograph of morning sunshine with sun rays, signs, the ship joke plot. Perhaps here we have seen that uh, when uh, today I have seen up to 6.30, there is uh, darkness in Gujarat. But in our place, it is very late. 6.30 means very late. But we have captured this in the early morning at 5 or 5.15, like that one. This is another sign, another shot which, which you took there. Morning sun rays, signs, the ship joke plot. After 30 days of sewing, this is the photograph which we took there in T1 and T2. Now we can recognize some sort of changes in the crop growth, in the field level. Sheep Joe healing continues in our plots. So we have tested the pollination based on total pots count, plant from a random sample of 10 plants we have taken from the two plots, and have compared their pollination percentage in terms of pot formation. So average number of pots per plant in T1 was observed to be 101, as compared to average number of pots per plant, 83 in T2. So there is also some sort of clear distinction in these two plots, which you observed there. As high as 122 pots we counted in one plant of sheep joke plot. This is an average. So besides that, we have observed that there was some early flowering in T1 as compared to T2. This is another positive observation from our side. Early flowering is seen in T1. After 50 days of sowing, after sowing, we have studied this one. Myself and Dr. Bayon have studied and observed the growth parameters. We have presented it in a tabular form. I will show you. This is the close look at the two crops 50 days after sowing. So, as I have already told you, that there are flowering starts early in the T1. We have seen lots of flowering coming out in T1 as compared to T2. Pot formation starts in both these. And we have compared the pot formation and flowering percentages. So flowering and bearing stages, one can see the comparison T1 with T2, the number of pots and number of flowerings, which you could see there. We have taken the weather data. Weather is said to be almost favorable during that period from September 15 to uh, November, up to 26 November, we have taken the data with a rainfall 9.04 during September, 3.5 during October, 0.9 during November. Rainy days with 10, 5, 16, 5, and 2. Maximum temperature 32.2, minimum 25 during September, October, and November. We have seen the data. And of course, uh, bright sunshine hours, you could see there, 5.02 during September, 7.84 during October, and 7.23 during November. Bright sunshine hours is very much essential for crop growth. In October, we are having that very good bright sunshine hours in this plot. And besides that, uh, there were some uh, other developments which I would like to mention right now at this moment, that uh, during October, there was a one-day heavy rainfall. And because of that, the two plots uh, somehow survived, but uh, in the other plots got damaged. Otherwise, we could not have taken so much of data because of that one. But somehow, these two plots survived. Anyway, so there were heavy rainfall of 74 millimeter on 24th of October. So as a, yesterday also, we have observed that there were changes in the climate. Climate changes are taking place. When Babaji last graced us on 30th of November in Assam Agriculture University, Jurhat, one of the farmer, he mentioned that there was no rainfall in the central Assam for a longer duration. Because of that, crops suffered badly. But right now, yesterday, I got the information from my family that there were heavy rainfall sowing the Assam. And and perhaps the farmers got all sort of relieved from that one. These are some positive observations which I am having. During first flocking, this is the situation of two crops. First one, green ground crop sheep joke, and second, green ground with all recommended practices. So have harvested first flocking on 27th of November. These are the comparison of the two pots which we 
have collected from the two plots. One sheep jaw killed, secondly with the normal compare. So here we have compared the performance and they've seen that the sheep jaw killed plots, the length of the plots are more as compared to the normal plots. <laughs> Even number of seeds per pod are also more in sheep jaw killed plot as compared to normal. <laughs> On an average, we have seen that uh, there are about 11 to 13 number of seeds per pod in sheep jaw killed. And in normal also we have seen about 10, 11. There may be some two or three number of seeds or more in the sheep jaw killed plot. But we have taken some average of all this. So this is the picture which I took there. This we have compared from these collected uh, seeds, uh, collected pods, and we have compared, and we have observed some uh, important observation is that that uh, sheep jog held uh, seeds to some extent, these are of uniform in size. But the other way in the normal, we have seen some sort of differences in their size and texture. Some sort of differences are there. Some may be smaller in size, some may be larger in size. That sort of difference you have noticed there. But in sheep joke, almost the seeds are almost uniform in this. So we have compared the growth attributes of green gram on 27, 11, 15. It was the first plucking. The crop is still in the field, and this will be harvested perhaps within three or four days. Final harvesting will be done. During that time, as it was in the field, we could have compiled the data for only for the first plucking. So during first plucking, you just notice that plant height in centimeter, in the T2, it is 74.2. In normal plot, plant height is more. It is because of the utilization of nitrogenous fertilizer. We all know that whenever we apply urea or nitrogenous fertilizer, the crop growth is enhanced. It's vegetative growth enhanced. And the branch per plant, if we notice there, T1, there's eight number of branches on an average, eight number of branches per plant. Here it is about 7.6. Some differences, there are little difference. Then plant dry matter production, we have compared kg per square meter, 2.44, a very positive sign for us, and 1.83. Average number of pots, as I have mentioned, whenever we took the average, it came to about 81.6 as compared to 75.6. Pod length, as you have seen in the earlier slide, 8.12 centimeter in T1 as compared to 7.02 in T2. And whenever we compare the crop growth rate, CGR, gram per square meter, you could see some sort of distinction there, 0.064 to T1 and 0.048. These are based on our observations, which we have done there. Yield attributes during the time of fast plucking. So we have seen there that there are some sort of differences. Of course, significantly uh, difference we could not see in the effective uh, number of pots. So there are effective number of pots. We have mentioned here 30.28 number of pots per plant. One question may be there that, as we have mentioned in the earlier slide, that there are about 80 or more than 80 number of pots on an average in T1. Why it is so reduced in 30.22, 30.28, or 27.6? So these are effective number of pots during fast plucking. There are some other pots which are still in mesio. Just these are in mesio, during time of fast plucking, we took only the mesio pots into account. That's why the results are such, 30.28 to 27.6. Seeds per pot on an average 10.5, 9.4. Weight you see 33, 32. But Whenever we compare the grain yield gram per square meter in time of plucking, you could see the difference. 172 grams in the first plucking and 96 in the second. Of course, actual yield will be estimated only after the final harvest. Only after final harvest, our results will come. So this is the quality of green gram seeds, which are tested. Uh, not much difference we could see there in terms of quality. Protein percentage in treatment two is slightly more as compared to T1, but in terms of fiber, S, which includes all the vitamins and minerals, minerals, carbohydrate percentage, T1 is to some extent, it is more as compared to T2. Of course, if fat and protein percentage is somewhat little higher in T2. And this is because uh, 
there may be some sort of explanation to it that we have used the nitrogenous fertilizers, we have used the other fertilizers as per recommended doses. This as per recommended doses, one should not for, forget that this T2 plot is under close supervision of us, we the scientists. And under any situation, we have not allowed the residual toxicity to remain in the seeds. Because that was a close observation. Otherwise, if it would have been in the farmer's field, you could have seen some different results. Because generally, what is our observation? The farmers, they do not follow the recommended practices of the scientists. When we suggest anything, it is based on our scientific study. The farmers, they follow it in their own way. They use it whenever we would not suggest it. Sometimes they control the pest just before harvesting of the crop. Under that situation, residual toxicity remained. But despite having some sort of insect and pest attack prior to harvesting this, we did not apply the insect and pesticides, insecticides there. That was one of the observations, because otherwise we could have seen some different results if we haven't applied that one prior to harvest. But that's why this is under purely scientist observation, purely our observation, that's why some sort of, uh, we have tried to maintain the quality. We would not like to compromise on the quality part. That's why we did not use that sort of insecticides where residual toxicity level remained. Further, whenever we applied melatonin during the early phase, we have seen that the, in both these two plots, there were the infestation of field crickets during the initial part. And in plot two, we have applied melatonin. And in plot one, I have asked the forum members, do you need any assistance to apply melatonin? They said, no, no, no. Nothing should be applied. We'll use our own insecticide. We'll use our own mechanism, the seed juggling. <laughs> so we avoided that one. And we have compared that. We have seen that uh, after one or two days, or three days, I think, all these uh, field crickets, they gone away. Of course, in the second plot, we used the melatonin to repeal these insects. So that was one, another important observation which you made. Further, though we have used malatian, we know that the phytotoxic level of malatian, whenever we applied in the soil, that it remained only for five to seven days, Dr. Bayan, he is knowing that one. So residual toxicity and phytological, phytotoxic effect do not remain there for longer duration. That is one of the main reasons that's why this quality could be maintained in T2 also as compared to T1. So this is about uh, the aspects which we studied and uh, we have tested these seeds, but what more? These are the initial observations as I am talking about. These are all initial. There's still a miles to go before we recommend all these practices to the farmers. As I have told you that uh, we have wide diversity of land, we have wide diversity of water resources, and there are different types of environment in, in the entire northeastern region. We consider eight states as sister states. Whenever we plan anything, eight northeastern states, we think together. It's not that solely we are thinking about Assam. We should also think about the Meghalaya, we should also think about Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh, everything. So all these regional characteristics, if we take into account, then definitely some more studies to be conducted in different parts. And I hope our other northeastern states scientists, they will also come forward to conduct such type of studies. But we need to conduct more. What more we should do? Next slide, please. So we've calculated the economics. We are more concerned. The farmers are particularly more concerned with the economics. Ultimately, the economics count, cost of production count. That's why we have tried to calculate the cost parameters, right on us from field preparation, sowing, and then intercultural operation, application of fertilizers, manures, everything, plant protection measures, harvest and post-harvest operation, all that we have calculated. One important point which I would like to mention here, that we have, been taken, we have also taken care of the healing part. 20 minutes of healing every day, provided by the Sheep Joke members. So on an average, if we calculated in terms of man days, it came to about 2.3 man days, considering eight hours Per day as mandate. Even if we have not excluded that one also, 
we took it into consideration that we must include that also, because otherwise the farmers should have spent that 20 minutes in other, <laughs> earning something. <laughs> so that's why, as being the economist, and I should consider that this should be included there. And uh, of course, it has good effect uh, on both this part, uh, first in terms of economics calculation, secondly, it provided the internal healing to our members also. That was their own. But still, being the economist, we have included that one. So we have, we have imputed the value for healing also. Then subtotal we have calculated 16,927 with 58.3 mandates. That means despite including the healing period, the mandates requirement came to 58.3. In T2, it was 66 mandates. We have included some sort of risk cost. We have seen that uh, based on the damages which took place there on account of rainfall, on account of, I would like to mention here right now, Babaji, that uh, there were attack by monkeys. That point I have raised in Jurhat also. So slight damages were there in both these plots for one day only. After that, uh, uh, we have not seen any such of damages being done by the monkeys. So that's why I have requested uh, the only forum members that you should try and standardize some other healing technique so that monkeys could be repealed. <laughs> Otherwise, that is a very, very great menace for all of us in the entire Northeast, not only in our place, but in some, no, in all the Northeast states. So I think some sort of concentration on that uh, aspect by this uh, Shiv Yog healing should be done by the members. So risk cost, we have included there, 2% for T1 and 3% T2, we have included the risk cost. And finally, Whenever we have calculated the benefit cost ratio, you can see the difference. This year we have calculated 6.96, very, very good and very positive. 6.96, very promising as compared to 2.37. So one important idea which came to our mind is that whenever I calculate the economics, generally what is our observation that agricultural production, in agricultural production, the rate of capital turnover is very, very slow relatively slow as compared to industrial production. That's why in Assam, whenever I see that the farmers, they're drifting away from agriculture, they do not take into more interest into agriculture, rather they will prefer doing some uh, tea gardening, some other industrial fund. It is because this rate of capital turnover is relatively slow in agriculture. So, but if we see such type of bees here, then we cannot say that this is relatively slow. If one can maintain 6.96 benefit cost ratio, we cannot say this is, this is relatively slow rate of capital turnover. This is very, very promising. And it will be, if we compare it to this tea production, it will be almost same to that of tea production. So that is why we cannot uh, consider that part. So my request to all the uh, farmers, the farmers here, this is a very viable, and this is not a, um, only viable, but very, very promising. And further, one important idea came to my mind that uh, whenever we're doing Shiv Jog as an alternative to inorganic agriculture, Shiv Jog as an alternative to organic agriculture even, organic agriculture, the cost of producing the organic inputs are very, very high. That too, we need to apply it in bulkier quantity in the plots. We have to apply it in more quantities. So that is also not very, very promising for the farmer. Of course, we could maintain the quality in organic farming. But even without organic farming, if we can continue with this one, then there is nothing. Then we can do everything. No cost will be there on organics. No cost will be there on inorganics. Then what else the farmer need? So I think that's why that this is a very, very initial stage observation would like to continue further on this line. So, but from the economics of cost of production, we've seen that per hectare basis, it is very, very promising T1 as compared to T2. So this is about the progress we made till date. But we need to do more. We need to do more research on it. So my suggestion is that we have to conduct trials in different locations with proper experimental design. Here we have not done the replication trials due to lack of land in our place, because already the technical committee was over, and we have not included that one. So that's why 
we could not perform the replication in our trial and we could not perform the statistical designing and statistical analysis on it. Then seed quality and nutritional parameters and soil biological properties to be studied in detail. Because uh, we have taken the data from soil, but we are yet to analyze the soil microbial properties. What are their, what sort of relationship, positive relationship, what type of positive association among the microbes, what sort of negative associations among the microbes are there in the soil. These things also need to be studied. So my, another intention is that uh, whenever we do sheep yoke healing on the soil, we energize the soil and the viability and vigor of this microbial organizing grows, organisms grow. But if the negative association grows, then that will be harmful for us. So I hope that positive association, we should study in that way. Whenever I discuss the matter with some of our other scientists, they say that uh, as uh, we're all concerned about the soil fertility, we're all concerned about the sustainability of land resource. So our attempt will be how to sustain the land resource base without further deterioration. So one thing was that we have to use manure, we have to use cow dung, we have to use decompost. But this is, to some extent, costly. It takes lots of time to prepare the compost. It is bulky in nature. So if this is one of the options, then some more studies should be done, then what sort of sheep jog healing give more positive vibration to the positive association of the microorganisms. If we could do that one, that will be another important observation, I think so. And we, the scientists, should do that sort of research. And another important observation, whenever we're doing this sort of experiment, experimental design, initially we fear that the, the persons, the other scientists, they'll laugh at us. Because all were not of this belief. Because in Assam, we all know that there were witch hunting is there, some sort of other such type of things are going on. Black spirits, black magic, some people think in that way. But whenever we try to find out this thing, now more scientists, they are interested to be a part of witch hunt. So they'll be coming. <laughs> so that's why my intention is that whenever we're studying the things, we should study in what way in what way is Shiv Jong healing? It acted on the crop. We all know that uh, we have emotional attachment. The farmer, he is emotionally attached with the crop. This is the bread and butter for the farmer, the crop. But here, some sort of limitation is that we are not the farmers, we are the scientists. The members of Shiv Jong Forum, they are also not farmers. They are doing it in their own way. Had it been the farmer's own plot, we could have seen some more different results, perhaps, some more positive results. That sort of emotional attachment, which I am talking about, the farmer with the crop. I have seen that uh, there are different types of therapies. I have noticed somewhere. Music therapy is one of the such therapy. We can see. You can feel that sunflower, one of the crop, why it bends towards the sunlight. So some sort of relationship is there. Likewise, some sort of every cell of the plant, it responds to some sort of action and some sort of vibration. There are some vibrations which, there are some sound wave which the people cannot listen. After some decibel, we cannot listen. But some sound waves could be listened by the other animals like dogs, cats, Similarly, plant also feel the vibration. When a positive vibration goes, then definitely it puts some sort of energy, it energizes the cell, as Babaji mentioned earlier also on a number of occasions. So that sort of study, that what type of vibration goes through the atmosphere, through the environment, that is a bit matter of study. So one scientist, he mentioned that if everything could be done, if production could be increased through ship yoga healing, if all sort of diseases could be repelled, then what is the need of the agricultural scientist? I think these are the further areas where we should continue doing research. How to enhance the soil microbial flora, how to do such type of vibration more 
so that we could, we could get more positive results. So these are some of the new areas emerging, how we could enhance the crop production. Part of our intention should be that we should do replication in different way. On one plot, we may grow purely the crop without even applying sheep yoke. Let it be, naturally, as far as possible. The second plot, let us do with all the recommended practices. Third plot, let it be sheep yoke. Fourth plot, let us combine sheep yoke with integrated nutrient management, IRM practices. Fourth plot, let's see the result, what improvements we, can, we could see if we combine sheep yoke with recommended practices. If we can find that such type of result and compare, then definitely more amount of uh, data will be generated, more data will be generated, and that will be very much beneficial, not only for the scientists, for the agriculturists, for the farmers also. So on that line, on that positive note, I hope in our university, we'll design such an experience in future, but uh, we'll require the help and assistance of sheep yogis, more sheep yogis. Thanks a lot. So this is my observation, and at last, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the help and assistance received from all the Sheep Yoga members of Vishwanath Swarili. At this moment, I would like to mention that Vishwanath Swarili is famous as Gupt Kasi. So it is a house for Shiva. We think in that way. Mighty River, Brahmaputra, along with all tributaries, passes through. So we have great regards on all this front and we want to maintain the flora and fauna of our place. We want to maintain the sustainability of land, water, and animals, reptiles, all the microorganisms, so that we should think about not for the present, we should think about our coming generations. We should leave this world for our coming generations. They should have a better living. We are living, they should have a better living. We should not destroy the environment, and this is one of the most viable option. And I do acknowledge the help and assistance received from our university authority and also the BN College of Agriculture and my colleague, Dr. H. Shibayan. He took the initiative to um, prepare all the plots and all such type of things by his workers and doing all the things. So thank you all. Thank you for your nice uh, hearing, for patient hearing. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. Shiv Yog.